Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II is a multi-role stealth fighter. And many experts consider it one of the world's most advanced aircraft. It's part of what's known as the United States Joint Strike Fighter Program. It refers to the development of highly capable aircraft that can replace a wide range of existing planes, including those specializing in air-to-air -air combat, ground attacks, and first strikes. This is the reason for developing three unique variants of the F-35. The largest of the variants is the F-35C, specifically designed for use aboard aircraft carriers. It features an increased wingspan to maximize lift. Foldable wingtips for easier storage. and reinforced landing gear to help it stand up to the hard, fast landings required for carrier operations. The F-35A is the standard model, which means it is only designed for conventional takeoffs and landings. As the smallest and lightest variant, it is capable of 9G maneuvers, boasts an increased range, and is versatile enough to take on a wide range of roles depending on the situation. However, much of the attention given to the F-35 focuses on the B variant, which was developed specifically with the United States Marine Corps in mind. The F-35B is both a vertical and short takeoff and landing aircraft. This is accomplished using a forward lifting fan placed behind the cockpit. And a directional exhaust nozzle on the engine. These two features allow the aircraft to take off like a helicopter or carrier jump jet. but they also allow for traditional forward takeoffs that are merely shortened. Both are ideal for use aboard amphibious assault ships, which have smaller flight decks than full-size aircraft carriers. Though the F-35C lacks VTOL capabilities, it is no less impressive when you see it in action on the flight deck. Here you can see a C variant launching and landing on the USS Abraham Lincoln. A Nimitz class aircraft carrier with a flight deck measuring just over 1,000 feet. The first thing you notice about an F-35C launch is that its wingtips are folded upward during taxiing. Since the C-Class boasts an additional 8 feet of wingspan, this feature is necessary to save valuable space aboard the ship. Once the flight deck crews direct the F-35 pilot into position, a blast shield is raised behind the aircraft, and the nose gear is affixed to the cattle bar system. As soon as the launch is initiated, the cattle bar steam piston helps launch the aircraft forward at speeds of around 165 miles per hour. The 
This, combined with the thrust of the engine, is enough to get the F-35 aircraft in around two to three seconds. During landing, the pilot deploys a special hook at the rear of the aircraft. This catches the hydraulically powered cables that allow it to come to a near instant stop. Though Navy aviators are undoubtedly very skilled, much of the coordination that goes into carrier takeoffs and landings are the result of the talented flight deck crews. These men and women are coordinated from flight deck control, which is part of the aircraft carrier's island. The officers who work in flight deck control survey and direct almost everything that happens aboard the flight deck. This includes carefully managing and tracking which aircraft are where at any given time. As you can see in this footage, the flight deck control personnel enjoy a commanding view of the entire ship. Using a variety of equipment, they are able to monitor almost all aspects of daily operations. Manufacturing an extremely complex aircraft like the F-35 Lightning II is as technologically dependent as one might expect. However, various sections of the aircraft are assembled at different places. The midsection is built at the Northrop Grumman plant in California, and the plane's tail is built in the United Kingdom. These pieces and components are then combined at Lockheed Martin's Fort Worth facility, known as Air Force Plant 4. Aside from constructing a 100% bespoke assembly line, the various companies responsible for the F-35 have incorporated dozens of completely new technologies into the process. For instance, it takes tens of thousands of fasteners to create an F-35. But to save time and money, the Air Force Research Lab helped to develop a workflow technology called FILS. This projects an image onto the aircraft section being assembled to indicate what fastener needs to be used where. Despite all of the technology that goes into the aircraft itself, one of the most advanced aspects of the plane is the helmet worn by the pilots. This incredibly complex helmet costs as much as $400,000, and they are so advanced that they feed virtually every bit of information a pilot might need right to their visor. This includes targeting information, thermal imagery, and more. Pilots can even look directly through parts of their aircraft wing and fuselage when necessary. With 360 degrees of situational awareness, a direct link to other F-35s in the squadron and with home bases, the pilots are in the best possible position to coordinate responses. The targeting system can even identify different planes by their make and country, giving pilots unprecedented input regarding the world around them. The helmet is connected to Lockheed Martin's own electro-optical targeting system. This multifunction system offers superior air-to-ground and air-to-air -air data, including high-resolution imagery, laser spot tracking, and range finding. The EOTS is actually integrated directly into the F-35's fuselage, just underneath the nose of the aircraft. It communicates directly with the aircraft's core processor, providing a vast array of important information to the helmet on command. The EOTS can even identify different planes by their make and country, giving pilots unprecedented input regarding the world around them.
It takes multiple specialist sites to make the EOTS work, but it all culminates at the same Fort Worth assembly facility. It's important to note that the F-35 targeting system is one of the most important parts of the aircraft. In order to ensure everything is fed to the pilot properly, the helmet must perfectly align with their eyes. A new haircut or even gaining a few pounds of weight is enough to throw this alignment off. The culmination of all the F-35's unique capabilities is a highly versatile craft capable of engaging in an array of different combat scenarios. This makes it the perfect representation of the Joint Strike Fighter program. In order to maximize the effectiveness of the F-35 stealth design, it boasts a mixed internal and external armament system. This is made up of 10 stations in all, with a total weapons payload capability of around 18,000 pounds. Unlike smaller fighters, this includes the ability to drop various bombs, including the AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon. This medium-range, precision-guided glide bomb is capable of traveling up to 70 miles to its target. An F-35C first deployed the 1,000-pound, 13-foot-long bomb on March 23, 2016. This is looked at by many as the first time the F-35 proved itself a true multi-mission aircraft. Please. While it is far from the most advanced thing about the F-35, the plane's ability to refuel in mid-air is essential to its overall mission. Here you can see F-35Cs from the U.S. Marine Fight Attack Squadron 314 performing mid-air refueling exercises over Okinawa, Japan. The F-35 uses a probe and drogue refueling method. This is where a deployable probe is inserted into a net system dragged behind the refueling aircraft. Once engaged, the F-35 can fill its internal and any external tanks with fuel, adding another 900 to 1200 nautical miles to its range depending on the variant. Such maneuvers require lots of coordination between the refueling aircraft and the pilots which is why practice runs like this are essential to the process. From tip to tail, the F-35 Lightning II is perhaps the most advanced and versatile aircraft ever employed by any military or air force. As the tip of the spear for the Joint Strike Fighter program, it is sure to prove essential to Allied missions for years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.